The world is no stranger to reports of unexplainable creatures, known as cryptids, roaming through the wilderness of North America. Whether it's grainy photographs of people in cheap Bigfoot costumes, or sinister, long-limbed creatures being edited into trail cam footage by bored woodsmen, you'll find no shortage of supposed evidence for claims of the unknown. But occasionally, will happen upon pictures so strange that they can't be ignored or easily dismissed. Because sometimes, these creatures aren't just frightening, they're deadly. This was the first known image of an entity known as the Bridge Worm, taken by photographer Thomas Piercing shortly before his mysterious disappearance in August of 2019. Piercing, an avid wildlife photographer, was on an assignment from a local nature magazine. He was tasked with taking photos of birds of prey roosting on the outskirts of a city for an article on the behavioral patterns of hawks in urban areas. That was when he spotted the entity, lurking in the dark beneath a nearby bridge under some train tracks that hadn't been used in years. He likely would not have even seen the creature if it weren't for a nearby street lamp that reflected a pale, sickly light off its waxy skin. It was hiding in the underpass and its body was mostly obscured in darkness, but he could see its arms and what he thought must have been a face, with two eye-like holes and a third hole that Mr. Piercing assumed to be a mouth, arranged to form an oddly sullen expression. It dipped and bobbed there in the dark, as if waiting. Piercing had been lucky enough to try his hand at underwater photography for National Geographic a few years prior, and this thing reminded him of the deadly moray eels he'd seen in the Mediterranean, an ambush predator lurking in its cove waiting for unsuspecting prey. Working with birds had made Piercing a quick shot with his camera, so he snapped a picture of the entity before it had a chance to disappear back into the dark. He got his photograph, and the rest is history. But Thomas Piercing had no idea that he would soon be history too. Thomas returned home and saved the image onto his hard drive. He had tangible proof that this thing existed, but he still felt an urge to learn even more about the creature he'd seen a nature photographer requires a certain level of natural curiosity, after all. He returned to the same location, but this time he found nothing. The creature, he theorized, must be nocturnal. He would return that night and check again. But when he came back in the evening, there was nothing there. It was as though the creature had relocated in reaction to being detected and documented the first time around. Piercing was ready to leave when something caught his eye. In a nearby field, surrounded by grass and weeds, was an abandoned house. It looked worn down, like the kind of place that hadn't had a human living in it in decades. Maybe, Piercing thought, something else was inhabiting the building now. Much of what is known about Piercing's theories come from written notes taken prior to his ill-fated journey into the abandoned house. His observations end abruptly after he decided to return and investigate the house, but his journal would become crucial in finding him later. Piercing approached the house, and with his camera in hand, he crept into the house past a partially broken front door that swung loosely on its rusted hinges. Inside it was pitch black, so Piercing turned on the light on his camera and ventured deeper into the building. He was sure that the creature was in here. The air wasn't still. He could feel the presence of life around him. That's when he heard something shuffling on the ground near his feet. He looked down and saw what looked like a thick, gray tube of flesh sneaking around the edge of a doorframe, like the trunk of an unusually pale elephant. This was much smaller than the creature he'd seen the night before. Perhaps it was a younger specimen. This smaller version also didn't look like anything Thomas had seen before. Was this creature an undiscovered species? Piercing's head was swimming with questions. It was the discovery of the century, something that seemed to defy all conventional wisdom when it came to North American fauna. But his fantasizing was interrupted by a sudden horrific shriek echoing through the building around him. It sounded almost human. Almost. But not quite. Just then, there was another shuffling on the ground behind him, but weightier sounding, like something heavy was being dragged across the ground. Thomas Piercing spun around to see what was approaching him from behind and screamed. In his last moments, Piercing was able to take a photo of the creature speeding towards him, and that was the last action he'd ever take. Later, during searches for Mr. Piercing's body, his camera would be found in a large pile of acidic dung inside the abandoned house. The only traces left of Thomas Piercing 
were bits of flesh found inside the fecal matter that were a match for him genetically, and he was presumed dead. He also left behind the last photo that he took in his final moments. Knowledge of the bridgeworm as a cryptozoological species has advanced considerably since the unfortunate death of Thomas Piercing. A number of his early assumptions about the creature were correct. They are a species of ambush predator, whose diet consists primarily of any mammalian creatures that venture too close to their nests, including humans. These nests are mostly in bridges and underpasses, particularly ones that are outside of major population centers, so as not to draw too much attention, but with enough foot traffic to guarantee a steady supply of prey. Like a trapdoor spider, the bridge worms wait for the arrival of isolated prey, sometimes even luring them into their attack zone, before striking with sudden and overwhelming force. Bridge worms have some unique biological adaptations that suggest humans have always been their preferred food source. Like the glowing lure of a deep sea anglerfish that tempts their prey to come within striking distance. Bridge worms developed a kind of fleshy covering for their heads, known as the false face. This false face, made from the waxy white skin that covers the majority of their body, develops vaguely human features as the specimen ages. The creature that Thomas Piercing had encountered was an adolescent bridge worm that had somewhat defined features on its false face. When bridge worms are in their infancy, their faces hardly appear human at all. As bridge worms achieve maturity, though, their facial features become more clear and defined, making them more dangerous predators. The faces seem almost human, if not for their unnatural color and freakish size. Beneath the false face is what is known as the bridge worm's true face, which is typically only exposed when the bridge worm is about to feed. In terms of bone structure, the true face of the bridge worm is eerily similar to a human skull, covered in what appears to be exposed flesh rather than skin. The bridge worm upon reaching maturity has over 36 large fangs, making it more than capable of tearing into and devouring prey. Speaking of large, some mature bridge worms are capable of reaching terrifying sizes, leading to them being counted among a race of megafauna known as the giants. A large adult bridge worm can reach the size of a small train, and, because of its massive physical superiority to almost all prey, can be far more brazen in its attacks, with some even venturing onto active highways at night. But for the most part, bridge worms are smart enough to avoid large groups of humans or busy places, instead preferring to prey on isolated targets in abandoned or low population areas. You may be under the impression that you'll be safe from the creatures, if you simply avoid bridges and underpasses. While this will definitely improve your chances, it doesn't guarantee safety by any means. According to Trevor Henderson, foremost global expert on the bridge worms, when food is scarce, the worms will stray from their natural habitat, sometimes to very great distances, to search for alternative sources of nourishment. Sources of nourishment that include you. For the best chance of avoiding a bridge worm encounter, Stay out of the dark, abandoned places at night. You're more likely to encounter adolescent bridge worms further away from the nest, as reports have shown that mature bridge worms will sometimes adhere themselves to their habitats. Like a hermit crab with its shell, mercifully little is known about the breeding habits of bridge worms, so it's unknown how or at what rate the creatures reproduce. Given that specimens of the creature at every stage of development have been discovered in different locations, it's fair to assume that there are many of these creatures out there. There have also been some suggestions that the bridge worms have connections to supernatural or occult elements, and that they are in some way related to other entities, like Siren Head, Cartoon Cat, and the Smile Room. Occult nicknames for mature bridge worms have included the Patron Saint of Dark Places, the Patron Saint of the Hungry, and the Patron Saint of Spotless Bones. These names may suggest that the bridge worm has some kind of hidden cosmic power, but this is still unconfirmed. Regardless of whether the dangers of the bridge worm are supernatural or purely biological, either way, they are highly dangerous creatures, and contact with a bridge worm should be avoided at all costs.